A fact that's often brought up in real analysis is that the real numbers are uncountable. They're an uncountable set. What does that mean? Well, there are so many real numbers, you couldn't even list them. You couldn't even make a list of them, even an infinite list. There are so many, you couldn't even create such a list. In a more formal sense, you can't make a bijection with the natural numbers. Often a set is called countable if it has the same cardinality. That's a fancy word for the number of elements, the same cardinality as the natural numbers, or if you can find a bijection between them. But if you can't do that, we call it uncountable. There are so many numbers you couldn't even make a list like you could with the natural numbers. And so in this video, we're just gonna see that the set zero one is one of those sets. This is the interval from zero to one, not including the endpoints. Now I'm gonna give you not necessarily a complete and total proof, but I'm gonna give you the basic idea here. This is a very famous and old idea. And this is called diagonalization or Cantor diagonalization. And the way we do this is we assume we assume a contradiction. So assume that this set is countable. I mean, we know it's going to be uncountable by the end of this video, but for argument's sake, let's say it is countable and let's use that assumption. What does countable mean? That means we can take every single element from this set and write a list. It's gonna be an infinite list, but Let's just say we could write every single number from this set. Well, let's just start. I don't think there's a great place to start, but this is an interval between zero and one. So maybe the first number is like 0.112567, eight, and, and so on. So let's just call that the first number. Maybe the second number is 0.299931, I don't know, so on. Maybe I'll put another one here, I'll make another number. I like nines, nine, 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 four, one, five, two, and so on. And we're assuming we could create such a list here. One, three, two, one, one, one. I don't know, I'm just making up some numbers here. So you would continue this way forever. And the assumption here is that if you did this, you know, forever, if you made this list, you could write every single number between zero and one, all of these decimals. And you know, these decimals could go out forever. Maybe some of them terminate, but they can go on forever as well. So I'm assuming I can create such a list. That's what countable would mean. Here's the contradiction. Let's create a number here. Now I'm looking at this first number the first number goes 0.1. So the number I'm gonna create would start 0.2. Let's look at the next number in my list and let's look at the nine. Well, I'm gonna bump the nine up. So I bumped the, the one up to a two. I'm gonna bump the nine up. I'm just gonna make that a zero. Let's look at the third number in the third digit. It's also a nine. Let's bump that digit to zero. In the fourth line, Hey, the number is a one. Again, let's bump that to a two. And let's do this, you know, forever, all the way down, you know, until I've created this, this number all the way down. And the reason it's called diagonalization or Cantor diagon diagonalization is because it makes like this diagonal line. And why is this interesting? Well, this number that I've created or it would take me an infinite number of times to create, but you know, let's, let's say I create this number in this fashion. Well, it's not the first number, right? It's not the first number because the first digit was different. It's not the second number because the second digit is different. It's not the third number because the third digit was different. It's not the fourth number because the fourth number was different. In fact, it's not a number on my list. I've created a number which is in this set but not on my list. But by assumption, I assumed I could write a list of all the numbers. So I wrote a list of all the numbers, but then I found a number that wasn't on the list. Oh man, this is such, such a contradiction here. Contradiction, little dueling swords 
contradiction. And so our assumption was incorrect that the set was countable. We must conclude that it's uncountable. And so this, I didn't necessarily write the most perfect proof of this, but this is the general idea for a Cantor diagonalization. Very, very famous proof. I hope you enjoyed it. Now make sure to click the link on the screen to watch the next video in the Real Analysis course.